13th lesson on Newton's third law. And so today we're going to learn about Newton's um, third law and how it's different than the second law. We're going to look at what an action-reaction pair is, and then we're going to be able to solve for force, mass, and acceleration in our action-reaction pair. So just a reminder, um, the different laws. The first law was the law of inertia. An object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. The second law was an equation. Net force creates an acceleration on a single object. Um, net force is the overall forces. And we did that in a previous lesson. Uh, Newton's second law, using that equation, F net equals MA, we can take a look at the scenario. We have, here's going to be a net force because it's, it's ignoring the weight and all this other stuff. These were all balancing off. And the overall force is going to be the 20 Newtons. Um, it's on a 10 kilogram cart. And we're solving for acceleration, which is what the question asks. Since it's a single force, I'm just going to say force instead of net force. So F equals MA. We can rearrange that solving for the acceleration, which the question asks for. And when we plug in our values, 20 for force, 10 for mass, we get 2 meters per second squared. Here's a question related to the third, third law. Does the force, uh, does the car or butterfly exert more force when the butterfly hits and squishes against your windshield? And so this is a little bit of a tricky question. Um, both are, are going to have the same force. It's not the force that squishes the butterfly. It's going to be the acceleration due to the force. And Newton's third law says that, that both forces are going to be the same. We'll look a little closer at that in a second. So third law is action-reaction pairs. So we have a pair. Um, the pair that's occurring here is the object, this car, and this butterfly. They're each exerting a force. And it says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So that means the forces will always occur in pairs. So this force is the car is pushing on the butterfly. The butterfly is pushing back. These are the two forces. The first one is the... The car on the butterfly, the second one, or which I have color coded in red, is the um, butterfly back on the car. And we know that these have to be equal in strength. And then also one other thing, there's, there's a negative there because they're going to be opposite in direction. So if one's to the right, the other one's going to be the left. If one's north, the other one's going to be south. So here's some questions. What is the reaction force when a bat applies a 20 newton force to a baseball? That's going to be the ball applying 20 newtons of force back to the bat in a reverse direction. What's the reaction force of the Earth pulling you up, uh, pulling you down by 800 newtons? Your weight is what the Earth is pulling you down by. And you'd be pulling the Earth up by 800 newtons of force. And so if I ever give you mass, you can just go ahead and do the FW equals mg and solve for the force. But here I went and get ahead and gave you the weight or the FW. But that was a, the last lesson we had. So um, just want to look at acceleration is inversely related to mass. This is important to know. So while the force is the same, so notice how I have the force in this picture at the same size, the mass of the car is much bigger. So therefore, the acceleration is much less. And when the mass is much less, the same force, the acceleration is going to be much bigger. And you can think about this by putting in numbers. So let's just say force is 1 because they're going to be the same. And let's say that mass for this one was bigger, or let's make that 2. Well, the acceleration as a result is going to be 1 half. Well, for this one, let's go ahead and make that mass smaller. Let's go ahead and make that 1 half. And 1 over 0.5 is going to be 2. So when you have a smaller mass, you have a larger acceleration. When you have a larger mass, you have a smaller acceleration. And so that, once again, is what the inverse relationship means here between the mass and acceleration. And once again, in Newton's third law, the force is going to be the same. So let's take a look at the difference between the second and third law. Some major differences include... So here's the second law, force, the net force equals mass times acceleration. The key here is that you have one single object. So we're looking at everything that's, that's happening to this, this box, and this box is going to be what's accelerating. So F net equals MA, all on the box. The net force on the box, the mass of the box, and the acceleration on the box as a result. So these are all different forces. You got that weight down, then the normal force of the ground pushing back up. Uh, you have a applied force by the stick man, and you got a force friction pushing back. And if there's a net force, which it looks like the FA is a little bit bigger, then that would create this acceleration on the box. Well, the, the third law deals with the action-reaction pairs. And so we have two objects. So this is the key here. We have the stick man, which is the first object, and we have the box, which is the second object. And so that's where those subscripts come from. So F1 is a box, F2 is a person. And uh, let's go and do a little bit of math with this. So 60 kilogram person, person pushes a 10 kilogram box with a force of 30 newtons to the right. What is the force on the person? Okay, so since the box is being pushed to the right, the person is going to be pushed 30 newtons to the left. 
Uh, let's do a little bit more with that. 60 kilogram person pushes a 10 kilogram box with a force of 30 newtons to the right. What, what is the acceleration of the box? Okay, so this is going back to Newton's. So here we're just looking at the box. This is going back to Newton's second law. So the box is being pushed with a 30 newtons to the right force. The box itself is 10 kilograms. The box itself is going to accelerate. So once again, it's all going to be the subscript too because I'm talking about the box. As long as you have it clear which one you're talking about, and you can use F, M, and A without the subscripts, but you just might want to write above it, we're talking about the box or something like that. Just to, Or you might want to say F box, you know, M box, A box. You just want to keep them in order. And so sometimes numbers, sometimes words are better than, than subscripts, the number of subscripts. But here we're talking about the boxes too, anytime we say two. So we're going to do F equals MA. We rearrange that for A, A equals F over M. And we can plug in the values just for the box and we get an acceleration. So this box would accelerate at three meters per second squared to the right. Once again, just looking at Newton's second law because we're talking about all the forces on a box and not the in interaction between this person and this box. And then 60, 60, 60 kilogram person pushes a box 10 kilograms. Okay, so he's pushing to the right. What's the acceleration on the person? Well, we're only concerned with the person. And since the box was pushed to the right with 30 newtons, this person is going to be pushed backwards to the left with 30 newtons. And this person has 60 kilograms of mass. And we're solving for A, once again, subscript 1, all representing this, this person right here. So we can do the math, rearrange the equation, plug in the numbers, and we'll notice that this person is going to accelerate 0.5 meters per second squared to the left as a result. So both of these had the same force of 30 newtons, but the person was bigger. So we had the less of an acceleration and also just reverse, it's gonna be the left as a result. So force will be the same, acceleration won't be. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna derive this equation from this initial equation using this Newton's second law mixed in with Newton's third law. Let's take a look at that. If Newton's third law says the force of one is equal to the same as the other, but in a reverse direction. And Newton's second law says, well, the first law, uh, or sorry, Newton's second law says the, the force, the net force of the, on this guy equals the mass on this guy times acceleration on this guy. And the second one says the force on the box, net force on the box equals mass of the box times the acceleration of the box, we can go ahead and we can substitute m over a or m times m1 times a1 and m2 times a1. We can go ahead and plug that in for the f up top. So we get this equation. So we substitute this m1 a1 for f1 and we get this side and we substitute this m2 a2 for the second side. Once again, we still have the negative there because we just substituted the F2, we get this new equation, M1, A1 equals M, negative M2, A2. So if they're not talking about forces, but they're talking about masses and accelerations, you can solve problems based on two objects and the equal and opposite force caused as a result, once again, all stemming from this right here. Let's take a look at an example. You have a 60 kilogram person pushing a 10 kilogram box and the box is accelerating 25 meters per second to the right. What's the acceleration of the person while the force is applied? So we're going to separate the force and box. So we have a mass of the person of 60, an acceleration. We're trying to solve for because that's what the question is asking you for, acceleration on the person. The box is going to have a mass of 10, once again, in the, in the problem. And here they tell you the box itself accelerates 25 meters per second to the right. So I kept the right in there. You can, And we're going to use a positive to represent this in the math. So we, get our, we pull down our equation and we start plugging in our values. We've got our 60 for our mass. We've got A1, which we're solving for. We still have to keep that negative because nothing got rid of that negative. But the M2, the M2 is 10 and the, and the A2 is 25. Plus, it's a positive because it's to the right. And we can do the math. And when we do the math, we're going to put these two together. You get negative 250. We divide out the 60 from both sides. So now we have this. And we get a final value of negative 4.17 meters per second squared. And since we said plus was to the right, we get a negative, so we can say 4.17 meters per second squared to the left. Here we have 95 kilogram Joe jumping off a 0.8 kilogram skateboard, Acceler and he, so Joe is accelerating at 1.5 meters per second squared to the right. So we're asked for what's the acceleration of the skateboard. Once again, keeping them separate, M1 is Joe. Uh, he's 95 kilograms, he's accelerating 1.5 meters per second to the right. The skateboard has a mass of 0.8 kilograms, and we're trying to find out what the acceleration on that skateboard is. So we're going to use plus to represent right, once again, using a sign in our math. 
And so we'll go to our, our equation over here. We'll plug in our mass one. We'll plug in our, our A1. We're going to plug in our mass two. Once again, keeping the negative because this did nothing got rid of the negative yet. This is, going to, this is just a switching of directions. And so we put the 95 and the 1.5 together, we get 142. And then we're ready to divide out the negative 0.8 from both sides. When we do that, we're going to end up getting negative 1.178.13 meters per second squared. Once again, since plus represented right, this negative now is going to represent left. So a final answer without the negative would be this answer right here. And if I ever ask you magnitude in a question, you just leave off the left. But if I just ask you for what is the acceleration, you should, if you know the direction, um, if you don't know the direction, you can say backwards if it was ever a negative. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem set, just going more. Once again, uh, for the problem set, you should do all these before you come and check your work. So if you're watching this video right now, go and do the problem set and then come back and just and just play the video to watch uh, watch me go through these answers. Okay, what's the weight of a 50 kilogram ch child? Um, the force, uh, the force the earth pulls the child. What is the weight of a 50 gram child? Which is the force that the uh, earth pulls the child down? So we have our mass of 50 kilograms. We have our g, and just a reminder, the fw equals mg is from a previous lesson. Weight equals mass times gravity, and we can solve for that. And we're just using 10. Once again, I gave you 10. Going back to the old faithful, we've been using the average of 10. In the last year lesson, we used 9.81 just because it was more specific, and we were trying to talk about different planets and comparisons. But we'll go back to 10, which is a good answer, or good, uh, good, good overall average for the acceleration to gravity on Earth, and we get 500 newtons down. So the weight of the Earth pulling the, the, um, the child down is 500 newtons. Well, the Earth is going to just pull the, or the child, the Earth is pulling the child down by 500 newtons, but the child is actually pulling the Earth up by 500 newtons. Once again, you can see this in the acceleration of a person if they ever jump, but if the Earth, you don't see an Earth because the Earth is much more massive. Once again, the force is the same, but the acceleration as a result is going to be different. Okay, here we have Tommy applying a force of 200 newtons on a 1,000 kilogram car while pushing it forward on a frictionless surface. How much does the car accelerate? So, um, if Tommy pushed, um, if 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 Tommy pushed the car forward, the, the we have a force of 200 newtons. We have a mass of the car of 1,000 kilograms. Um, once again, in here we're asked for the acceleration of the car, and we're going to Newton's first law, just thinking about the car. A equals F over M, the, the 200 force over the 1,000 kilograms, and we get an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared forward. How much does Tommy feel uh, feel from the car? How much force does Tommy feel from the car? Well, it's going to be, if he's pushing the car forward, he's going to feel a force backwards of 200 newtons. This is going to be more of a newton's uh, third, whereas this was a newton's second law equation kind of deal. And then how much does Tommy accelerates? We're going back, you know, these are kind of interchangeable. They, they interact with each other. They're not exactly the same as you saw earlier in the lesson. But we have Tommy going 200 newtons backwards. We have Tommy having a, a mass of 82 kilograms. And we're trying to find for the acceleration of Tommy. So since we're just talking about net force on Tommy, uh, we're just going through, we're doing Newton's second law, and we get the 200 newtons backwards divided by the 82 kilograms of his, uh, his mass. We get an acceleration of 2.44 meters per second squared, and this would be backwards. So, so backwards would be the perfect answer, um, just to kind of take into account the reverse direction. So that's backwards. Okay, a 76 kilogram person jumps off a 100 kilogram canoe, accelerating the canoe five meters per second squared to the right. What's the acceleration of the person? So this is one of those ones where they're giving you masses and accelerations, and you're going around the, um, you know, around the the what you could be doing for your equation. You're going directly to the m1 a1 equals negative m2 a2. So we want to get the m1 of the person, 76 kilograms, the acceleration we're trying to solve for. The canoe has a mass of 100 kilograms, and we're when we're given an acceleration of point or 5. 0 0.0 meters per second squared to the right. So we're going to use a plus to represent the right. We're going to go into this equation again and we'll plug in our values. Once again, the key here is to make sure that you, the biggest thing is if you get this mixed up and you think that this happens to be, um, you know, Tommy's acceleration or the person's acceleration in this problem, um, you, that's where some of the mistakes in these kind of problems can be made. Just be careful that you know, you know, which one's your M1, which one's your M2. Or which one's your object one and which one's your object two. Keep the masses and accelerations together, which I did here. So now we can go ahead and plug this in. Uh, negative 100 times 5 would be negative 500 over. We divide out the 76. 
and we get negative 5 points, so 6.58 meters per second squared. And since we use plus to represent right, the answer is going to be left in this case right here. Okay, so we have 67 kilogram Jody that swats at a 0 0.012 kilogram bug that landed on her, applying a 50 newtons of force to squish it. So she applied that 50 newtons of force. As a result, um, Jody feels how much force? So when she squishes this bug, does she feel equal, um, less than the 15, more than the 15, or equal to the 15? And the answer is going to be exactly equal to the 15 newtons of force. Whenever she applies to the bug, the bug applies back. That's Newton's third law. What's the acceleration of the bug? Well, this is going now. We're just thinking about the bug. We have 50 newtons. We have a, a mass of uh, 0.012 kilograms. We're solving for acceleration. And so we're just going to do F equals MA, solving for the bug's acceleration using all bugs information, the Newton second law. And we get 1250 meters per second squared. Would the magnitude of Jody's acceleration be more than the bug, less than the bug, or exactly the bug? This is a different question than 4A. 4A was asking about the force, which is equal and opposite. But Jody is much bigger than the bug. So her acceleration is going to be a whole lot less than the bug. The bug is going to feel a lot more in a way because it's, it's going to accelerate much different than Jody herself or her hand. Okay, last question, just kind of tying to Newton's first, second, and third law. Go ahead and match these up. When you push a wall, uh, on a wall with 50 newtons of force, the wall pushes back with 50 newtons of force, which law is this related to? And that's going to be Newton's third law, action-reaction pairs. When you hit your car's brake, your body leans forward. That is going to be Newton's first law, and law of inertia. You want to keep on moving forward because your car was moving forward with you, but the car stopped. You still want to go forward, so you end up leaning forward. And then lastly, Joe and Jill both push a 159-kilogram refrigerator. They're each pushing with a 200-newton force. Um, and the refrigerator accelerates at 2.5 meters per second squared forward as a result. This is going to be Newton's second law. Net force coming from both Jill and Joe pushing with 200 newtons. And then you can solve for this if you wanted to, which I already solved for it. It was just part of the question. Just matching up the different Newton's laws.